let's see. Say it away. Who is Barbara? Hey guys. Hi. Oh, by the way, so if you, sorry, I'm so loud. You may or may not know, it's Tupac Shakur's birthday. Tupac is my all-time favorite person to hip hop. So happy birthday, Happy Juicy, happy Father's Day, happy Pride, because we're here in June. So we're gonna move fast. So I'm here today to talk about the community college curriculum. I had the opportunity to develop um, this rooted in the life and legacy of Nipsey Hussle. So a dear friend of mine who actually lives out here in San Francisco named April Birdie is a uh, instructor at Nancy Community College in Cupertino. And she had hired me to be her teaching assistant. And she was feeling like she needed to like pull back and have a little bit of a break. And so initially we were going to work together um, to create a curriculum. And she was like, you know what, you're so passionate. Um, would you be interested in creating a whole class? I'll help you. And so I had two weeks um, at the end of last summer to make an entire 12 week community college curriculum. And so the class is called Creative Minds. And it's the class in the humanities where students have the opportunity to think about creativity in their life. So it's not just about do you want to be a musician, do you want to be a creative person. The whole concept behind the course is like how do we integrate any form of creativity into our lives. So my friend April is very anti racist, pro women, pro queer, like pro immigrant. And so, how do we, and so how do we take that curriculum like further by making it, um, thinking about Nipsey Hussle? So my experience with hip hop on an academic level is that often people tend to, they start out. They don't start with like a person or with hip hop. They feel the need that like they have to go out, like they have to look at like, well, what is the history of hip hop? Or like, we have to bring people in the know. But if the fifth element of hip hop is honorary, if we call it knowledge, why don't we start with knowledge? Why don't we start with the person? So our textbook for the class, was this book, The Life and Times of Misty Hustle by um, Rob Kenner, who was a former editor of Vibe Magazine, among a lot of other hats. So it's not only a very intensive biography of Nipsey Hustle, but it also gives a lot of context to what's going on for him as a person, what was developing in LA that made the West Coast hip hop that he grew up listening to, what's going on in California, um, the Bay Area, in terms of the independent grind of how artists work, what's happening in terms of gang culture and cocaine. So it not only gives you the context of who is Nipsey Hustle, but who is Nipsey Hustle in the context of all the things that are happening around him. And so part of what inspired me to make this curriculum is a lot of the students that we were encountering were exhibiting a lot of anti-blackness, which unfortunately is very much related to the United States. So it's like, well, how do we interrupt anti-blackness by bringing knowledge into it? So we're looking at Nipsey Hustle as the knowledge and what makes Nipsey Hustle to go out. So like I said earlier, oftentimes we think about hip-hop education at the college level, people start out. Like we gotta look at um, the whole history of the Bronx and we have to go back, 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 back and we gotta tell you everything about the history. I'm not saying that's wrong, but if hip hop if knowledge is the fifth element, what if we pick a specific person, song, region, era, and be like, we're gonna start here and we're gonna learn about this to look out and make connections. So that's what we did. So we took the biography of Nipsey Hustle and brought in a lot of interviews about him, things about him, and had students make connections. So in the class, I had them watch Ryan Carey's master class on background vocals. And you might think, why? Like, it's not a class about music. But once you're learning about Nipsey Hustle, Nipsey Hustle is the, is the knowledge. And we're seeing that, like, everything that he did was super intentional from the way that he built his team, how people made him. Um, his whole look, he talks about his, uh, his friend Jorge, that he worked with, who was a photographer, that whole like uh, Time Magazine, black and white, it's intentional, the way his videos look, the way he's dressing, like, it's very intentional, it's all like the behind the scenes of what makes the big picture. So I have students watching Masterclass and Ryan Carey, they want to back and vocals. Get you one of my other favorite artists, Brandy, to think about well, what is collaboration and how you look at every little aspect of something in terms of creativity make something up. So it's cool if you don't want to be an MC or entrepreneur or to be a singer or whatever you do in your life. It's again the class is creative minds. So how do we arm students to think about creativity in their lives? So whatever you're gonna go do is gonna involve multiple moving pieces. So we saw in that class Mariah Carey and Brandy are hella famous for stacking their background vocals. There's a very specific style that they're not fairly credited for as black women that's so popular in R&B, even hip hop and pop music that they didn't create it, but they made it what it is, a style that everybody has copied. Um, and so they go in and you get to see them stacking vocals and collaborating to see the little things that make the big things. You have students watching the Pixar film Coco because there's a mantra in that whole thing. I gotta seize my moment. Well, what's Nipsey Hussle's mantra? The marathon continues, all money in, no money out. So this is the knowledge. How do we start here and go here? We had them watch Homecoming by Beyonce. 
particularly as another black artist, she talks extensively in that film about why she made it um, historically black college homecoming, why she made the outfits what they were, why the band is what they were. So you get to see how like that knowledge, we learn about why Nipsey Hussle was independent, his whole thing was all money in, no money out, why is he like that? Why is he like that as a West Coast artist? Why is he like that as a black artist? Why is he like that as a millennial? Why, you know, there's so many things to why. And so Beyonce being a little older, a very different kind of artist, but also an artist of color who had a mainstream deal that took a lot of independence over her career. So again, I'm thinking about creativity, wherever you go in your life, what are you going to sacrifice for ownership? So there was a video I was going to show y'all, but we're small on time. So if you see Homecoming by Beyonce, there's the clip where she talks about um, she had just had twins, she had a really rough pregnancy where she almost died. And so if you've seen it, she talks about all the things that she wasn't eating. And my student thought it was because she was trying to get skinny. And I was like, no, y'all, she's trying to get the endurance and trying to get fit. And so she was talking about, I'm not eating meat, I'm not eating carbs, um, I'm not drinking alcohol because she's getting ready to dance and how he was on stage for like three hours. So to get people thinking about, well, what do you sacrifice? Because even in creativity, you're passionate, you're sacrificing something so they got to see well, what is Beyonce sacrificing and what are you going to sacrifice um, when you go forward in your life? And to close it out, um, one thing that was really difficult for me in thinking about that class, it's a class about creativity. And so the difficult part is that Nipsey Hussle was gunned down in LA in the beginning of his 30s. So it's like the class itself, while we did tackle serious topics, creativity often is a more fun, uplifting thing. So I was actually struggling with how do we how do we close this course? And so going back to my friend April, who I was doing the class with, she was like, well, think about it, Lindsay. There's something very American about gun violence. It's not that we like it, it's not that we love it, it's not that we're okay with it, but like, what makes Nipsey Hussle different than any other American that's impacted by gun violence? So we're thinking about creativity. Why don't we challenge students to think about well, what are creative solutions to gun violence? And so there's a really good interview um, on NPR Fortunately, I don't have the name of the college professor they were talking to, but it came out right after Offset when the Migos was also gunned down, talking about how we think about hip hop. We say that it's the artist's fault that they got shot or they got killed. But when we think about school shootings, mass shootings, we don't think of that same energy. But when it's a rapper, when it's a black rapper, it's your fault that you got gunned down. So how do we help students think about um, what Nipsey Hussle actually represented? And so we ended the class with him writing a eulogy. So if you were going to give a eulogy about Nipsey Hussle to people that didn't know him after everything that you learned in this class um, and thinking about creativity, what do you think he wants to be remembered for and why? And so it was a great tool for anti-racism because a lot of my students are international students first gen, a lot of Asian students that are first gen, um, Latino students that are first and like 1.5 second gen white students. So it was like, it was used both an anti-racist curriculum and also thinking about Nipsey Hussle was the knowledge we were going at instead of looking out and looking in and seeking hip hop. So for students that may have an upper class background, they might think, oh, you're in a gang, you're a bad person. You sold drugs, you're a bad person. You've been in jail, you're a bad person. But when you have knowledge, and you start with Nipsey Hussle and you go out, how do you make the connections? So it's like, how do we use the knowledge about, again, I did it for a person, but it could be a person, it could be a song, it could be an era, it could be any element of hip hop. Instead of thinking about how we have to start big and then go small, what if we start, it could be the art of DJ, like Ellie's talking about beat making, it's like we don't have to go big and then go in, we can start small and go out, so how do we build those connections? So it's exciting to see students some of them getting it, some of them kind of fighting back and like struggling. But it's like, how do we use the life of somebody that the media has not um, painted fairly that students may or may not relate to? But we're not asking if you relate. Because when I was growing up, didn't know we ask if the old dead white man I had to learn about was my jam. And it was, it, you know what I mean? So it's like, you think about hip hop education, why does it got to be different? Why does it got to be, do they like it? It's like, I don't care if you like it, it's college, it's a class, you're an adult, like, figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we're going to figure it out. And they figured it out. Um, so it's like, if it wasn't your thing, that's absolutely okay. But you're gonna take hell in classes that aren't your thing. So what does it mean when we start with a person and go out? And so it was cool to see how students were able to like make those connections and we're really bringing in like the real stuff. So like bringing in his music, bringing in interviews, um, and so not sugarcoating it because not every part of hip hop education has to be cute or has to be respectable. And I think that's why Nipsey Hussle was a really exciting person to choose because um, unfortunately, his life, you know, ended very short, but he was still young and he's still modern. So even though our 18-year-old students might not necessarily have that, like, connection with him, he's a modern figure. And we learned a lot about technology, um, independence, entrepreneurship, and again, thinking about if knowledge is the fifth element of hip-hop, how do we use that 
and go out and see the kind of connections that we can make. We talk about cancel culture, we talk about voting, like there's so much to think about when you choose a figure that has so much going on. There's so many directions that you can take it and make creativity the base. So uh, the class wasn't specifically a class that was supposed to be about Nipsey Hustle. If we're talking about creativity, we have the opportunity to go out and make the connection. So like force these students to be like, it's cool if you hate hip hop. It's cool if you don't even like Nipsey Hustle. But we're gonna give you this knowledge and ask you to bring in your opinion, what you learned about Nipsey Hustle and the other content we're showing you, like from my Beyonce or Coco um, or Cancel Culture and like, how do you build the connection? So it's not about if you like it, but it's like, how did you make the connection? And hopefully they're taking it somewhere else with them. Um, so just kind of like challenge the narrative. So challenging the anti-blackness and a lot of our students were talking about how much they love Elon Musk, which is a lot. That was so much, uh, so very much. Uh, but thinking about it's cool if you want to be an entrepreneur, but how do we give you other examples of what it means to be um, an entrepreneur? Because as y'all know, it's the marathon. And I hope that we, you know, invoke that into the students that took that. Unfortunately, I got laid off because um, because this is how it goes for people that are educators. My friend I was working for, I worked directly for her, and despite being a 15-year veteran of higher education, she did not full time at any of the schools she works for, so she was paying me out of pocket, and it just got. Even though I wasn't working a ton, she couldn't afford it. But I have an entire curriculum that I want to take to communities, whether it's for community college students, younger students. I have everything. Um, just finding the ways to bring it to the people. Thank you. 
contributions to society or whatever were important. Um, and then the second question is, we want to provide opportunities, right, for students to have real world connections. So I really like the fact that you had them research, but instead of doing a report, you had them write a eulogy. And at first I was like, that's fire. But then I thought about it, I was like, would that be too morbid for like elementary students? So how could I like adapt that? Man, there's so many reasons that I chose Nipsey Hussle. But one thing that I thought was really important is he's a more modern figure, um, being that he lived to his early 30s. So I love like 90s, 80s. I love going back. It's like, how do we pick someone that's relatively recent? And he had an extremely unique identity of being um, African American, descendants of enslaved African people, but then also being second generation Eritrean American. I was working at a college that has a lot of international students or students whose parents are from other countries. So I thought it was a very unique lens in because he's somebody that very much understood what is like the anti blackness from enslavement, but then also what does it mean to have a parent as first generation American. And that was something that was a little bit of a lens in um, for our students. And in terms of our elementary school students, um, I think it'd be something you have to fill out, you know, and, and again, my friend Deepa really helped me with this, is like, unfortunately, none of us are immune to gun violence, whether it's because we're in under-resourced communities where gun violence is common, or even in more resourced communities where we see, especially like, wealthier white dudes, like, losing their stuff, and like, shooting up a school, shooting up a church, shooting up, shooting up a mall, like, not to go to a dark place, so kids are not immune. So, I mean, it is morbid, but we don't know what their parents are telling them, or like, we know they're picking up on stuff, so I feel like as an educator, you would know your students best to know how how deep to go in terms of gun violence or debt, or even if you talk about debt, you know, maybe you don't want to talk about the gun violence part, just be like, well, he's deceased, and see what kind of questions, like, they might ask. Because um, some populations may be more ready to handle that than others, but we know that kids are knowing about gun violence because it's, it's so around us all the time, which is pretty dark, but like, it's real life, right? Thank you. All right, you guys have been an awesome audience. This has been an awesome panel, and we are going to close it with our final presenter. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be a great closer. Professor Don Alyssa Fisher has been fighting for hip hop education um, for several decades. Um, she was one of the figures here in the Bay Area who was an advocate for it at the university level. Um, and uh, her journey is one of, you know, we could, we could learn a lot from, you know, especially as we're talking about uh, like critical race.